morning, church, and welcome to Wednesday morning services. It's, um, it's good to be with you, and I'd ask that we'd open up in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, as we gather together, we gather as people who have come from fragmented and hurting homes, hurting backgrounds, knowing that you are the one who makes us whole, you are the one who gives us purpose and direction, you are the one who gives us that peace that that goes beyond all understanding. You're the one that gives us knowledge that sometimes amazes ourselves with the things that we say. You're the one who takes charge of difficult situations when we place them in your hand. You're the one who heals the brokenhearted, who mends the lame, who understands our struggles and our concerns. And we come this morning with nothing to give but ourselves. And we would ask that you would take us and use us to your glory and to your work. In Jesus' name, Amen. The reading that Johnson is going to uh, elaborate on today is from First Peter, First Peter chapter 4, the reading of verse 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial that you are suffering, as though something strange was happening to you. But rejoice that you are participating in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God, the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the, to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what would become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Now, I'd like to welcome Johnson to share those thoughts on that passage with you. Good morning to you all. <clears throat> Today is the 27th of May our midweek service. May the good Lord bless you. My theme today is developing staying power. Developing staying power. Some people read this passage and they decide that everything that happens to us is to be seen as a blessing from God. They will tell you quite straightforwardly that God has even every event of your life planned, including anything that seems to be bad at that time. If that gives them faith that everything will come out right in the end, it could be a blessing. But too often, what happens is that we think that every evil thing that happens is visited on us by God. And instead of being led to a renewed faith in the ultimate working of God, People become angry, turn away from God. Afraid to tell God that they are being treated unfairly, that they are angry at him, they say nothing. They are hurt, frightened, and isolated, even from the love of the one they needed most. But this is not what Peter is saying here. We need to read carefully to hear what Peter means to convey to us. Peter doesn't say that God wants us to suffer. He says that we suffer because we are of the house and lineage of Christ. Because we belong to Christ. We are of the household of Christ. That's why we suffer. So the suffering that sometimes come upon those who are faithful to God comes precisely because we are clogged with the God spirit. We are part and parcel of the God Spirit. So the natural attitude of, for a Christian is to look on persecution as a strange and abnormal. 
We are surprised when we have to suffer. But Peter tells us that we should consider it as normal Christian experience. We have no right to expect better treatment from the world than our Savior received. All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. It is especially true that those who take a fortress stand for Christ become the object of saving attack, savage attack. Satan doesn't waste his ammunition. Uh, Satan doesn't waste his ammunition on normal Christians. He turns his big guns to those who are storming the gates of heads. A theologian of 1930s from Germany was a man by the name of Karl Barth. Barth drew a weird picture of our lives that portrayed us living within the very periphery of God. All of the creation exists, he said, inside of God. Outside of God, there is literally nothing. So to be outside of God is to descend into non-existence. Satan has opted for this state of non-being and furthermore wars against God. As Satan pokes at God, if that's where you are standing, you get poked. Because that's where you are. It's nothing personal. We have not been selected particularly. It's just that the poor, that's the point Satan jabbed at this time. He's poking at God and you are poked as well. Now that may not be particularly comforting, but we need to understand that God does not choose to torment us or test us despite what we may read in or into the book of Job. What Peter is saying essentially, what Bath says, we are tormented because we are seen as being God's people. And those who wish to oppose God will pick the faithful as targets for their right. So the privilege of sharing Christ's suffering should cause us great rejoicing. We cannot, of course, share his atoning sufferings. He is the only sin bearer. But we can share the same kind of suffering he endured as a man. We can share his rejection and reproach. So the early Christians rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Christ. In Acts 5 verse 41. So should every Christian who has the privilege of being revealed for Christ's sake. Such suffering is a true indication that the spirit of glory and of God rests upon us. So we should not worry because we are suffering for Christ. This is the Holy Spirit who rests upon persecuted Christians as the glory cloud rested on the tabernacle in the Old Testament. Indicating the presence of God. We know that the Spirit indwells every true child of God. But he rests in a special way upon those who are completely committed to the cause of Christ. They know the presence and the power of the Spirit of God as, those, as others do not. So the same Lord Jesus, who is blasphemed by the persecutors, is glorified by his suffering saints. We are the suffering saints and we end up glorifying God for what he has done. So as a Christian, so a Christian should never bring suffering upon himself for wrongdoing. He should never be guilty of murder, stealing, evil in general, or meddling in other people's matters. There is no glory for God in, it, in this only shame for the testimony of Christ. But if there's no disgrace if anyone suffers as a Christian. F.B. Mayer says that this is true whether it means the loss of business, reputation, and home, desertion by parents, children, and friends, misrepresentation, hatred, and even death. Under the name of Christian, it is possible to glorify God in all these trials. Do you think you would have that kind of staying power in the face of severe opposition, even violence. To experience persecution every day for the next two or more years under the name of Christ. How far would you go, have to go? How long will you do take you? How certain will you do to be after even a month that God, after some small suffering, restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast? And what if you knew there were some people who would not just rough you up, but put you sheets and come at night and drag you from your house and torture you and kill you? What if some of those people were the same people who were supposed to enforce the laws during the day? 
What if you knew that enemies wanted you to die? How long do you think you would you could live that way? Peter assures that there are, is indeed an enemy in wait for us. The devil prowls around looking for someone to devour like a rolling lion. In 1 Peter 5 verse 8. What is the cry for which we are hated? What is the cry for which we are hated as Christians? Being God's people, having the name of Jesus in our hearts, being clothed with the Holy Spirit, trying to love one another as we have been loved. For this belief, these actions, this reality, we may be made fun of at work. If you are a teenager, you may be made fun of because you pause before eating to thank your creator for feeding you. Or because you refuse to drink alcohol or the use of drugs or you refuse to swear or because you honor your parents. If you are a construction worker, you may be called a coward because you refuse to harass women passing by your side. If you are a housewife wife, you may be made to feel inadequate because all you do is stay at home to care for your children. And everyone in the neighborhood, they are talking about you. When Peter is saying, take heart, you are not the only one who was ever made fun of for being faithful to your spouse. You are not the only one ostracized because you wake up to the quitting bell. You are not the only person who is shocked at what people do to each other. You are not the only one angered by co-workers who take home everything they need for a home office out of what the company supplies for use at work. Maybe old friends who want you us to return to our old ways of life probably have opposed us in some way. Perhaps family members are afraid of the changes we have made in our lives and put obstacles in our way. As we face these trials, we must remember that God will be faithful to us and use us even our painful experience for our good. God is there to help you manage and go through these sufferings. If we suffer for our faith, we need to keep on doing what we know to be right. No matter what obstacles may be placed in our way, God will never desert us once we have entrusted our lives to him. When you have put your life in God, God will never desert you. God will always look after you. But be careful. Your shock can turn to self-righteousness quite fast. We can easily begin to think we are better than everyone else. There are snares for all of us. So stay alert. Keep yourself disciplined, but don't let anxiety take its toll on you. Peter insists that suffering must be according to the will of God. Religious zealots may invite suffering by acting impulsively without divine guidance. So we should not just cause us to be persecuted. It should be suffering for God's will. Those with a matter complex tempt in a way that uh, tempt God in a way that leads to dishonor. But the true path of suffering for Christians leads to eternal glory. In view of that, they should continue to do right, no matter what the cost may be, and entrust their souls to the faithful creator. When you go to bed at night, don't fret. Give your case to God. Who knows better than we can imagine how to handle what's wrong here? Eventually, Christ himself will restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. Praise God, and in the end, you will have every reason to praise God. As we also focus on God, we will find new hope no matter what circumstances we face. Then as we preserve through tough times, our behavior will reflect that God is working powerful in our lives. People can see through our behavior that God is working in us. Even in difficult times, it is only reasonable that we should entrust ourselves to the one who made our souls and who has saved us. So we put ourselves, we surrender ourselves to God, who is the only one true God, who is the only one who is able to defend us in times like this. I just want you to look back into your life. 
as you go through difficult times, as you go through hard moments in your life, can you place your life in God's hands? Because he's the only one who can help you. Don't put your life in people's hands. Put your life in God's hands. May the good Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to listen for allowing us to share the message, for allowing us to preach, for allowing us to hear the message. Father, when we are suffering from anxiety, when we are suffering from difficult situations, we know where to go. We know where to find help. It is only through you, our Lord and Savior. For we know that we are not alone. For we know that you are always with us. So Father, we surrender our lives in your hands. We even pray for this coronavirus that we become untouchable for we know God will protect us and look up after us. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.